I'm Dr. Jordan Newen. I'm an inventor and entrepreneur from Sydney, Australia. <laughs> oh, I like a spaceship. <laughs> I've come to China, home to some of the most exciting startups anywhere on the planet. Almost a third of the world's TV screens are made right here. Oh, yeah. Entrepreneurs here are at the forefront of cutting edge innovations, exploiting and adapting the world's hottest tech ideas. That is so clear, that's incredible. Pushing the boundaries to pursue their dreams. Like giant mosquitoes, really fast. And making the most of the speed, talent, and atmosphere of China's biggest and most dynamic cities. Our lives are in the hands of this computer right now. I've come to the Pearl River Delta in southern China, the country's manufacturing heartland. This is Asia's largest electronics market. There's 10 floors just like this. Each of these stalls represents a factory or distributor based in this part of China. This place has everything. There's LEDs, switches, batteries. Everything you need to prototype or create your product is right here. It's heaven to an engineer. This region grew up making electronics and now it's the best place in the world to buy them. 10,000 packages a day go out from here. 400. 400 yuan? Yeah. We'll do that. <laughs> Very good. If I was to buy these components from home, they would probably turn up in about a week, whereas here they're going to do it within half an hour and for a tenth of the price. It's just awesome. I want to discover how cities like Shenzhen and Guangzhou have transformed this region from the world's factory into China's most innovative area. More patents come out of just this part of Shenzhen than the whole of France or even Silicon Valley. And whether hardware is what makes this region home to the highest concentration of startups anywhere in China. Sound like giant mosquitoes as they shoot through the air. FPV drone racing is an awesome new sport taking China by storm. Fast, really fast. The Pearl River Delta is the home of hardware, and hardware that flies at 250 kilometers an hour represents this region better than anything. But when it comes to flying robots, there's one startup based right here that has created a bigger buzz than anyone. When it comes to consumer drones, they created the whole industry from scratch. DJI has taken Shenzhen's expertise in manufacturing to invent something completely new. The out of the box, ready to fly aerial camera robot. DJI is the world's biggest consumer drone company, hacking, tinkering and adapting to invent an entirely new product that is constantly evolving. We talk a lot about innovation, but it's incredibly rare that companies actually come up with something totally new. Before DJI, if you wanted a drone, you had to go to the local market, buy your own parts and build it yourself. DJI it created an entirely new market. With any new idea, but especially one involving hardware you can take apart, you soon get copycats. So what makes DJI special and a classic Shenzhen success story is that they are constantly reinventing their big idea. DJI started out with this Phantom 1. Basically the whole thing came in one package. And that's how they started taking the market. And then the product line just sort of goes from there. Let's take off. Oh, yeah! DJI's latest drones can automatically follow you, take selfies using gesture recognition. They have stereo optical sensors on front and back, and infrared sensors on the side for obstacle avoidance, as well as three axis gimbals and a 20 megapixel camera that can film smoothly in winds up to 30 kilometers an hour. We're always thinking of ways to innovate and do new things. That's how we stay ahead. Our technology constantly evolves. We, we don't know what we're going to come up with next, but what we're always doing is thinking about how else uh, our technology could be used in different ways. 
DJI has cornered the market in drones for aerial photography and they got there by constantly innovating. They now make 70% of the world's consumer drones. Before DJI, the drone market simply didn't exist. Its success comes from being first and by always remaining one step ahead of its competition. It's a lot of fun too. Ever since Shenzhen was declared China's first special economic zone in 1980, the Pearl River Delta has always been open to the world. And it's still the place people come to design and prototype products. This is the largest hardware accelerator in the world. There's been more than 200 startups that have come through here, and it's just to be in Shenzhen. It's literally the electronics capital of the world. Pretty much everything that's been made with some kind of electronics component in it has something which was somehow went through or made or sourced in Shenzhen. You've got all the specialist suppliers here you could possibly need to create innovative products. We crank up a new prototype every one to two weeks. And that's just a speed that it was unimaginable. Didn't know you can build a robot that fast. When we have a problem on motors, we can quickly call up the motor manufacturer, go visit them, and they will give you very good advice, all for free. If you need even the slightest change, you can have it done in a day. Even if the screws are not the length you want them to be, you can call the person who makes screws and have them the exact length you need <laughs> within a day. The whole ecosystem is totally set up to develop and build as quickly as possible. It's the best place to develop something, and I'm sure we'll be coming back here time and time again. That maker spirit is everywhere in Shenzhen, and it's brought people from all over China looking to prototype ideas. Dexter Robotics is a startup working on something immensely challenging that few companies have ever attempted. Its founder is Gu Xiaoqi. It provides timely force feedback when we reach for a digital object that's clearly not here. VR is one of the hottest topics in tech, but while it aims to fully immerse you in another virtual world, there's always been one sense missing. We can move around, we could hear things in VR, but we can never touch it. We can't interact with it in the most natural way that a human offers, which is our hands. Dexmo is a haptic exoskeleton glove that not only tracks the motions of your hand, but also provides resistance when you handle virtual objects making the experience far more real. And rather than relying completely on my visual sense to, to make me think that I'm picking up an object, I'm able to actually feel it as well. I'm holding the bike by the wheel right now, and I can grab the screws and pull them out. This definitely makes the immersion that much greater. It might not be perfect yet, but the potential applications of this kind of tech are impressive, from remote surgery or bomb disposal to virtual training. It works like this. Blocks in the glove act like the sinews in your hand, while gears apply reverse force through what are called servo motors that can go in two directions. Complex algorithms then work out exactly how much reverse force to apply to your fingers to recreate the feeling of the item you are holding. It's an incredibly difficult problem to solve, and Dexmo is a perfect fit for Shenzhen. This has never been seen by anybody on Earth before. It's completely new. We're not doing some sort of micro-innovation. This is the ground-up innovation. This was built in China, designed in China and built by us. Gu has been through 50 iterations of his design before this point, and that's something that could only happen in this part of China. So it takes a servo as an example. We have motors, we have circuit boards, we have sensors, and we have gears and machine parts, a lot and lots of things. Uh, we would need different suppliers for this. And Shenzhen is probably the only city in China where we have all of them in one city, and they're only one phone call away. But being in the middle of the most successful manufacturing region in China has led to another huge benefit for startups like Dexter. Factory owners that made their fortune making things for the world are now helping fund startups here. Our suppliers are in very good relationship with us. They helped to machine everything for us without us giving them any money. We didn't have to pay a penny. The factory owners, they really appreciate it and they are giving us their support. Right, so they're investing in you kind of like a future customer. 
where they made enough money from their first business ventures and they wanted to invest in the next generation of technology. It's another benefit of this region and sums up just how this city of makers might be the best place in China to pursue a dream. It's all made possible by being near factories. And the manufacturing miracle had another impact. Machines for sequencing genes are made here. So labs coming to be close to the factories have made Shenzhen the home of genetics research in China. In Shenzhen, like much of China, the city parks are full of people looking to take care of their health. There's a well-established tradition here for treating illness through exercise, but technology is offering a far more personalised way of looking after your body. I'm off to see one of the most exciting and valuable startups in all of China. They've found a way to incorporate cutting-edge AI and world-leading genetics research to help you take care of your health with incredible precision. Here is your latest data. iCarbonX has come up with an app that can precisely monitor how the unique changes in your body, your lifestyle and your habits affect your health. I'm starting to build up my digital avatar. It's all part of a movement called precision medicine, a priority in China and something Shenzhen is right at the heart of. iCarbonX's founder and CEO is Wang Jun. We want to use the technology we will have to helping people empower themselves, know more about themselves, then they can manage themselves into a better way. But knowing is the first step. By documenting everything you do, as well as changes in your body, the app can predict how and when you might get ill. And it's perfectly tailored to your unique biology and lifestyle, which means even super busy startup CEOs can keep an eye on when it's likely to get too much. I have a risk of hypertension, for example, probably due to my stressful life right now. So. <laughs> Getting started on your digital journey is pretty simple. This is how easy it is. You get sent a home kit, which you open up. There's a couple of different things inside here. You need saliva, urine, and stool samples. Once you're done, you put it back in the box, scan the QR code, and send it back to iCarbonX. It's really that simple. Just like your real life, the building blocks of your avatar is DNA, which is found in your saliva. In the bottom of this vial, there's one to two micrograms of DNA. You can just see it in the bottom there. And that contains one million gigabytes of information. Gene tests used to cost hundreds of millions of dollars, but the sheer number of machines pouring out of Shenzhen means a basic test now costs just a couple of hundred. DNA is our code for our life also gives some information about whether you are a gifted athlete um, or you're do, you should do some endurance sports instead of doing some sprints, those type of things. The machine analyzes 96 key genes from the saliva sample. Complex algorithms compare those specific genes to what is known about how they affect health. iCarbonX does the same with the unique biomarkers in urine and stool samples that contain important information about things like heart and organ function and adds everything to the avatar. It's always good to know about yourself. So you can make better decisions in health and just better decisions in life. Yeah, yeah. My results are in now. Yeah, so... You're going to talk me through this? So let's, let's for example, taking a look about your yeah, nutrition perspective. Knowing my body's makeup means the app can offer some advice straight away about the best way of being healthy tailored to me. Based on all of the data that has been collected, this meal plan has been put together specifically for me. But what's clever about the iCarbonX app is not so much what it can tell me right now, it's what it can tell me in the future. What's really important is that it's starting to collect data about my life. By regularly updating that information over time through new samples or visiting walk-in sensors, the app can monitor how my body is changing and whether those changes show I'm headed towards illness. It can also collect and analyze data on the exercise I take, changes in my body fat percentage, what I've been eating, and even my social life. 
What I find fascinating is that iCarbonX also claims to work out how your everyday behaviour affects your health. And the key to this is WeChat. WeChat is a huge social media app and 900 million people in China put every part of their life through it. It all adds up to a massive and very personal collection of data which can be analysed by iCarbonX for possible links between lifestyle and health. Once we got those data, the artificial intelligence are going to uh, help to recognise those patterns. That big data is what makes iCarbonX so exciting for the future and why it's worth a billion dollars. Its ability to predict illness depends on being able to spot patterns in huge volumes of data, way more than humans could ever analyse. The more data it has, the more links between people's biology, lifestyle and health it will be able to identify, many not even currently known about. This young startup is amassing more data than big companies or even governments can collect. In three to five years, we are trying to accumulate data for one million individuals. But then, of course, it's not the end, right? It's the start point. Mm -hmm. So we try to build up, you know, tens of millions and billions in the future, hopefully. The precision health advice of iCarbonX could save the lives of so many people. As more people get involved, the artificial intelligence gets much better and ultimately, many more lives can be improved. iCarbonX has exploited recent developments in the ability of computers to analyse big data. It's an area entrepreneurs here in the Pearl River Delta seem to have mastered more than anyone. I'm Dr Jordan Nguyen, I'm an engineer and an inventor and I've come to China to see how the entrepreneurs are at the forefront of ideas and technologies that are changing our world. Companies here are using the proximity to factories to constantly innovate new ideas and update old ones. And they've used big data and artificial intelligence to help computers understand the world better. AI is changing our world, but not every company can have a team of experts like Google or Facebook does. A startup in Shenzhen is providing an off-the-shelf AI that can be used by anyone wanting to use artificial intelligence in their business. The man behind Product AI is Marlong Tech founder Matt Scott. Product AI is, is a way for anyone who has a, has a business to be able to access AI in as easy a way as possible without having to have a, a giant R&D team. As easy it is to make a web page, now you can make AI work for your system. Matt's AI specializes in helping computers see like we do. Because it can analyze huge quantities of data far quicker and more accurately than a human, it has the potential to make any industry that needs to understand images far more efficient. including one of Shenzhen's most famous bits of infrastructure, Yantian Port. 25% of all China's exports flow from the Pearl River Delta to the world. And it, too, is getting smart. We're at the largest single port in the world. And on the side over there is the new port, which is going to be fully automatic. It's going to be artificial intelligence driven to be more efficient, faster, lower cost and more safe. Artificial intelligence can automatically understand what containers are coming through the port and give instructions on what to do with them, all without any human interaction. It could improve efficiency by 30% and reduce labour costs by 70%. It's a great example of how AI could transform one of this region's dominant old industries. But what makes Marlong Tech special is that it isn't just working on the port, its AI can be applied in making any industry smarter. Like another of this region's most famous industries, textiles. The textile industry is dominated by Chinese production. I mean, they export at the largest scale in the world. In this business, efficiency matters so much. Fabric mills need to know what's happening next so that they can predict 
fashion so they have the materials ready. Predicting upcoming fashion trends traditionally relied on teams of people trawling random samples of photos from designer fashion shows. It could take weeks and worse still, not be accurate. By analyzing hundreds of thousands of runway photos, we'll be able to determine uh, pretty well what is coming next. We'll be able to go from months to hours. And instead of random sampling, going through every possible image out there. This efficiency is so big for this traditional industry and is really a great point for how can we bring AI to transform it to the next level. The reason Marlong software can analyze such a range of images is a type of deep learning artificial intelligence called a convolutional neural network. It learns what things are, kind of like how we do. This is a model trained for recognizing animals. And this is a visualization of what the computer sees in some way. Computers can't just look at pixels to identify what an animal is. They might be in different positions, and a Chihuahua and a Great Dane look very different, even if humans would recognize both as dogs. In our brains, different neurons fire when we see specific stimuli, things like colors, shapes, or features of an animal. And combinations of these neurons firing tell us what we're looking at. A neural network operates in much the same way. The idea of deep learning is that there's multiple layers. The first layer learns things that are very simple and straightforward, like edges. And the second layer may be blobs. And the third may be eyeballs. The next may be faces, and, and so on. And you can almost think of it as building blocks combinations of these neurons firing is what allows your system to go, that's a dog. By telling a computer enough times what a dog is, it learns to spot the patterns that always appear in an image of a dog. It also works for clothing, food, in fact, anything. Marlong Tech has people all across China teaching computers to recognize the things its clients want recognizing. So that's why data is critical here. Training computers requires huge volumes of it. It used to be hard to get enough data for reliable computer models, but the recent rise in the internet and images posted on social media has provided masses of it, all part of the reason AI has exploded recently. There is just so many images being uploaded every single day to these media sites that it's just a tremendous source of data for us. Data is at the heart of all AI. So if it doesn't already exist, Marlong has to collect it itself. It's currently flying drones over the port to try to get enough photos to teach the AI how to recognize containers like a human does. The problem we're trying to solve here is the recognition of the codes on the container. It's similar in some sense to a license plate, but since they've been out in the open seas, uh, there's a lot of wear and tear. The drone is helping us to collect large-scale data of real containers in their natural habitat. Nowadays, for artificial intelligence, really data is the new oil. Recognized person. This kind of AI can help augmented reality shops interpret what you're wearing and automatically find items that complement your style, just like a human sales assistant. Ah, oh, I'm tapping that. It can help with quality control too. Previously, the only way to make sure a fabric is what it says it is was to painstakingly trawl samples under the microscope. Now AI can match materials in milliseconds with 100% accuracy. AI was once, you know, just in the realm of the big billion dollar companies, but now it's open up to anyone. This is what we think will help us get the transformation of traditional industries into this AI plus new world is to make this stuff easy to use, low cost and fast. There's a huge push in the Pearl River Delta to make old, cheap labor-based industries more efficient. More than 17,000 low-value factories have either been closed or automated in Shenzhen alone over the past five years. But automation and AI are also revolutionizing another sector of China's economy. Startups here are using the latest technologies to understand the world better and make the Pearl River Delta's traditional industries like manufacturing more efficient. But they're also taking those exact same technologies and innovations and applying them to other industries too. This is a fully autonomous, artificially intelligent agricultural drone. 
that is incredible design you've got there. It's dragging the very oldest part of China's economy into the 21st century. X Aircraft's co-founder is Gong Jiaqin. It's very important for the Chinese farmers to learn what's the future of farming. We have lots of jobs in city replaced by robots. Mm. But in farmland for hundreds of years, we haven't changed the style of work. And that's quite sad for me. You know, we are geeks. We, <laughs> we design these robots, the drones, to transform the farmer's lifestyle. China is modernizing fast, and this area of the country is automating faster than anywhere. It's no surprise it's a startup here that's automating farming too. We're going to fly about two meters per second okay. at one meter above the vegetable. And then go. Farmers simply order their field to be sprayed via social media. Artificial intelligence automatically calculates the size of the field, the amount of pesticide needed, and the optimum speed of the flight. The drone does the rest. The drone will plan the flight route itself. And sometimes we have power lines, we have houses and trees in the field, and the drone will actually avoid it. But there's no joysticks. Automating the process not only frees up the farmer, but it's also far safer. Because AI has calculated the route and the rate of flow, exactly the correct amount of pesticide is used, so none is wasted or poured into the rivers. And because the drones are smart, you can use as many as you want to speed things up. They won't crash, and the AI can even compensate for things like the weather. Well, we got a bit of the wind today. The AI would determine how many meters we need to move you know, to compensate that wind speed. It's a perfect example of this region being at the forefront of transforming China's economy from low value to high value. And it can even encourage farm laborers to move to higher paid jobs. But that means making sure their drones can do the work required of them day after day. Compared with a consumer's drone, this is more like a robotic arm in a car manufacturer. It's a super, super durable. You have to be reliable, working for thousands of hours without changing any parts. It's industrialized. It's made out of aeronautic grade aluminium and carbon fiber. And every replaceable part has a QR code, so they know exactly how long it's been in operation for. The batteries are super well protected to prevent puncturing and exploding. Its rotary nozzles propel the pesticide at the speed of sound atomizing it to droplets small enough to stick to insects' wings, meaning even less pesticide is needed. X Aircraft now has 3,000 individual drones in operation every day across China, with every journey streamed back to HQ. There's 11,579 in Xinjiang alone in just the last week. X Aircraft, using separate surveying drones, has mapped all of China, taking thousands of aerial photos. The AI analyzes these maps to plot routes and avoid obstacles, so that means it needs to know what it's looking at. We train AI to recognize the boundary of the field. We have 30 staff marking the boundaries, marking the road, trees, houses. The field within the blue boundary is ready to fly. The AI can even recognize what kind of plant it's looking at, making sure it only sprays the right kind of crop, spraying, for example, lemon trees and avoiding grasses. It all helps save pesticide and make the process more efficient. But there's one more bit of AI they're working on here that is truly extraordinary. By using multi-spectral imaging in the surveillance photos, the AI can potentially even identify individual leaves that need spraying. In this area, for example, got disease very heavy, so we spray more here, but less here. We can save about 60% of all chemical use if we use this application in the future. It all adds up to huge efficiency improvements in one of China's largest industries. But what I love is that once again, Gong and his team aren't standing still. They're already working on the next generation of drones that are even smarter. So see that one? It's got eyes in front, like a robot. 
you can actually see. Because it's got the cameras in the front, when it's flying towards us, it will actually recognize human shape <laughs> and stop. Stopped. But my stick is still forward. We're living through this one. <laughs> By using cutting-edge technology, this startup could revolutionize China's agriculture, just like robotic arms have revolutionized its manufacturing. X-Aircraft is also making farming more eco-friendly, and that push to be green is evident everywhere in this industrial part of China. Shenzhen is one of the world's most sustainable cities, and that's inspired one of the world's most successful companies. Looking around Shenzhen, it seems to have far more electric vehicles than almost any other city I've been to. Shenzhen has the biggest electric bus fleet in the world. There's more than 50 of these charging stations across the city. And there's one name that keeps on cropping up. BYD. It came to be a part of Shenzhen's remarkable manufacturing past. And to me, it's likely to be right at the heart of its future. Tesla is a company that's known all around the world for revolutionizing the electric car market. But this company has already quietly done many of the things Tesla is wanting to. It was once a startup at the center of the made in China boom, and it's still here. But it's now hacking its own technology to put itself at the forefront of innovation. And the secret to its success? The battery. All tech needs power. And these guys are the battery masters. So it's like a four-wheel drive. Pretty fast, right? BYD started in 1995 using Shenzhen's cheap labor force to make batteries for mobile phone companies. It soon grew to make power sources for more than half of the world's phones that pour out of this region. But they really took off in 2003, when the battery company started making cars. BYD is a battery company, so we have 22 year battery experience. So we know all kinds of battery. BYD have perfected their R&D to create a completely new type of car battery based on iron, which means it can charge and discharge its power quickly, lasts much longer and is inherently safer perfect for cars. This is the world's only 100% fire safe, completely recyclable vehicle battery. We can crash the battery, even put, put the battery pack into fire, there's no explosion. And how long do these batteries last? 20 years. 20 years? 20, yes. Wow. Yeah. But their expertise in manufacturing didn't stop with cars, and that's why this company seems to me to sum up Shenzhen's maker spirit so well. In fact, it has exploited pretty much every new industry involving batteries in the past 20 years. As well as cars, they've electrified buses, vans, trucks. As they say around here, if it's got wheels, we'll make it electric. They're now the world's biggest electrical vehicle manufacturer, and now they've completed a fully electric light railway. They've also moved into power generation, from collecting energy through solar cells to storing it in huge batteries. Renewable solar generation, battery storage, it's all based on battery technology. I think for all the innovation, uh, very important is BYD have the technology. Batteries and portable energy systems are so important in our society today, so you've got to keep innovating, yes. making sure that you're, you're pushing the boundaries of your technology. It's turned what was a small startup 15 years ago into one of the world's biggest companies. There are 50,000 people who live and work in this one factory, and there are 25 factories that BYD have in China alone. It's such a massive company. BYD used the city's maker spirit to be at the forefront of many of the world's most exciting technologies. And that's what I love about Shenzhen. This company sums up Shenzhen better than almost anyone. It's used its expertise in manufacturing to go from made in China to designed in China. It's another company at the forefront of technological change. From starting out as a small battery manufacturer 
it's grown to do practically everything in its industry. That spirit of innovation taking apart and reinventing defines this region. New ideas are springing up everywhere here, including some of the most ambitious and daring innovations anywhere on the planet. This is the Ehang 184 passenger carrying mega drone, a low altitude, fully autonomous aerial vehicle for short distance transportation, capable of flying for up to 28 minutes on a single charge at speeds of up to 100 kilometers per hour. The idea is to have drones flying set routes autonomously between stations spaced out around cities like Ehang's hometown, Guangzhou, all monitored from local command centers. The plan is to have one of these flight control centers in every city. It's the brainchild of Ehang's CEO, Hu Huazha. These flight control centers are all in our system. We have to do the test. 而且进行过实地考察，所以说我们的人，我们的乘客进入到飞机之后，我们只要在屏幕上按一个按钮，这个呃先这个按钮是选择他要去的这个目的地。It can fly short pre-planned routes up to 40 kilometers with GPS to know where it is and complex software to compensate for things like wind. It's not ready yet, and this one is just in the testing phase. But if it succeeds, it could disrupt the way we travel. Not just driverless, but flying cars. It might seem dangerous, but whose motivation for this totally new mode of transport was actually to come up with a safer way of traveling? Every part of the drone has built-in redundancy with fail-safe software automatically landing it if anything goes wrong. There are duplicate sensors, eight motors and eight propellers, so even if one fails, it can still fly. The reason so many manufacturers are focused on autonomous vehicles is that they have the potential to be safer than vehicles driven by humans. And amazing as it may seem, it might actually be easier to achieve that in aerial vehicles than cars. The ground is very complicated. There are people, animals, and cars. When the plane goes to 100 meters, there is no problem. The 184 has now had more than 200 hours of flight time, including tests in Dubai. It's not something that I've ever seen before, and I think it's the kind of thing that could only be made here in the Pearl River Delta. An example of a freewheeling, risk-taking company exploiting this region's manufacturing resources to make something entirely new. As a first company, its risk is more high. But for me, as for our team, for our team, there are many people like me. I think the plane has become a crazy situation. So we don't have any difficulties, we don't have any difficulties. We have to do this. This is the reason why we are doing this as a first company. And what I love is that it's all inspired by a very personal vision. Ehang is a great example of the spirit and passion required to make it as an entrepreneur. This is just brilliant technology. I mean, something this, this complex would have been far too challenging for most people to create, especially through a startup. But this is just all testament to the passion, the drive, and the heart of the founder who's made this possible. The Pearl River Delta is China's Silicon Valley for hardware. The region got rich on manufacturing and now startups are building on that foundation using the latest technology. They are embodying the region's maker spirit and exploiting the supply chains and expertise here. And it's something DJI encapsulates perfectly. They make at least two thirds of the world's consumer drones. But vertical specialization in a product for one purpose isn't what makes DJI worth at least eight billion dollars. We started off primarily known for our consumer electronic drones. We realized that a lot of our products were actually being used for more than that. They were actually using it to map agriculture or map uh, pylons. And so we decided we wanted to build something that was specifically geared towards our industrial users. The answer was this, a fully waterproof, dustproof drone that can be adapted to any use like adding 30 times zoom cameras to inspect equipment from a safe distance or heat-seeking cameras for search and rescue. 
That's the second clever thing about DJI. They've allowed other people to innovate for them, adapting both the hardware and also software. We allow our people in our community to actively use our software toolkit and build upon um, you know, what we already have as hardware. Being able to adjust the software means disaster relief teams, for example, could adapt a drone to land on a moving vehicle, which means no time is wasted looking for survivors. We're really focusing on not just consumer aerial photography, it's really more getting the whole commercial industry on board. It's another way DJI has made sure its products are constantly evolving, innovating themselves but also allowing other people to adapt and improve their products too. That constant innovation seems to me to be something that owes a lot to this region. Until the 1980s, Shenzhen was a collection of fishing villages with a population of 30,000. It's now more than 11 million. You might call it Shenzhen Speed. And it's another reason startups are flourishing here. What you see here 20 years ago is all sea. Chen Rupang founded a finance startup to make the most of the extraordinary growth of the city. Shenzhen's super fast development, as well as perhaps the most liberal local government in China, helped make Shenzhen a financial hub. It's the home of Chai Next, China's listing for high growth, high value startups, a great exit for venture capitalists and entrepreneurs. This is an exciting moment for this company. They're moments away from floating and going public. About 70% of listings here are for hardware companies. It's those opportunities that have drawn people from all over China to pursue their dreams here. The Pearl River Delta has done more than anywhere to debunk the myth of copycat China, becoming the global hub of innovation in hardware and manufacturing. Startups here are exploiting the latest tech trends like convolutional neural networks to reinvent the region's manufacturing past, improving productivity and favouring precision over mass production. They've harnessed the region's maker spirit to constantly adapt and update old ideas for the future and come up with ambitious and completely new ideas. It was the first region to invite the world to China, and now it's exporting technological innovation back to the world. It's got creativity, collaboration, innovation. It's got young entrepreneurs in it. It has this culture where you don't feel afraid to take risks. So with access to the people, with access to the supply chain, and a location that just has so much speed and energy to it, it's the ideal place for a startup.